everybody. I'm Danielle Downs. Today, I'm here representing Free Salon Education, obviously, and today we'll be going over a really great fantasy color melt. Now, one of the things that led me to this was actually Matt just giving me a mannequin and saying, do whatever you want. So when you think about fantasy colors, think about the fact that by definition, fantasy is literally the process or the mindset of creating, you know, something that is impossible or improbable and totally unrealistic. And I like the idea of that. Because then you're literally becoming like your own little Jackson Pollock or uh, Picasso or Bob Ross. So you're just having a lot of fun with the hair. Plus you're combining techniques that literally you would use in the salon for other techniques, such as a, a block color technique or even like a root touch up with some highlighting. So always think creatively, but push the boundaries. So with this color, we used Paul Mitchell Pop XG. I used about five different colors to create this. Pop XG is a really great fashion color that does help to just condition the hair a little bit. It has the most amazing kind of apple scent to it. Kind of reminds me of an hour later. Um, as I talk, you guys will notice that I make a lot of food references. So bear with me on that. But also with fantasy colors, you have to think about the fact that it evokes a certain type of attitude in somebody. And like I said, you're creating something that's totally improbable and unrealistic and totally from your own mental images. So when you say something like, oh, we're going to go with a phoenix today, what does everybody think? They always think reds, oranges, yellows, very fiery. And it's such an empowering kind of image, too, where it just kind of makes you think about rebirth and growth and all of that kind of stuff. And besides that, it's just totally badass. So with this color melt... I just went in with your primary colors. There was a time where I tried to explain that to Matt and it was kind of a little disjointed. So I was glad that he gave me the opportunity to just play. So with this, I used the color melting technique where I just blurred the root a little bit. I used um, Midnight as well as Bordeaux to create kind of like not just a flat black, but a reddish black. Then I used red. Instead of using just a basic blue, I actually use the tropical blue that they have because it gives it just a little bit more of almost like a denim feel to the hair. And then yellow. And of course, when you're melting and you're kind of just combining these two colors together, you end up making secondary colors. So we all know that if you combine blue and yellow, it makes green. So we get a lot of different pops. So it's almost like an impressionist view of coloring hair. So you have depending on where you part it, she can have different looks no matter what. And your placement is totally up to you. Personally, I used a diagonal section. Diagonal sections for me are a lot more forgiving and they, they peak at different areas. So again, you get like a really cool mix of colors as it falls and as the hair moves. So when this is swaying in the breeze, like all kinds of things are just popping out left and right. And people are like, wait, where does this begin? Where does this end? So also keep in mind when you're coloring, what kind of cut are you going for? Like when I colored this, I didn't think about the fact that like Matt might be cutting it short, but I did think to myself like, hey, I would still like to see light and dark pushing each other because like right in this section right here I went a little bit lower with my darker kind of black base so that way it can really pop those colors that are laying over it by having that shadow behind it and again that's achieved through more of a diagonal sectioning and I also tried to work a little bit neater than I normally do so I also use our Paul Mitchell paddles. It's great because it's got these little wells in there so you can actually like load your color on. And this is also from their balayage collection. So technically, from their balayage collection. So this is where you would actually load up your clay lightener, your skylight or whatever it is that you're using. So I'm going to work with that today to make it a little bit neater, especially because Matt put down this totally white floor. And now I have the pressure of not messing it up. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. 
So originally, when I did this, I just did this sectioning just to keep it neat and out of my way. But actually, what it does help to do is that I'm not going to end up touching any of the other areas, and I can work almost like in a bricklay pattern with my diagonal sections. Some of the sections, because of the diagonal, will actually kind of make a triangle or a horizontal line, but it'll still diffuse really nicely because of the point that it comes to right in the center. Okay, so let's drop our first section there. And let me get some gloves on. So I'm gonna hop in here, Danielle. One thing uh, with you guys that are watching, so we're, we're running this show. Uh, if you guys have questions, make sure you put a Q and then your question. That way we can, uh, I can send it over to Danielle. She can answer it for you. Uh, what this whole class is about, these classes that we're doing every day live, is about you guys getting involved, talking in the chat, having a good time. So uh, definitely start asking your questions. Put the Q in front of it, and uh, I'll get it over to Danielle as we go. Uh, also, if some of the OGs in the chat, the people who have been watching this for a very long time, um, if you could help us out, if anybody asks you know, where Danielle gets her clips or where Danielle, you know, any of the, the normal questions, what's the app, all that stuff, just let everybody know, P post the, uh, the links in the chat for us. I'd really appreciate that. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna let Danielle keep going, but just type Q, put in your question, I'll get it over to her as we go. All right. Okay, so right now I'm just mixing Midnight with a little bit of Bordeaux because as I said, I don't want it to just be a flat black color because especially when somebody goes out, because this is a totally blonde canvas, so I had to create a root uh, to melt from. And if this is something that somebody does, especially if they've had fantasy color before and they're completely blonded out or they're just naturally blonde, I like to see a little bit of reflection. And I just naturally go for warmth, even though technically we're using warm and cool tones right now. Okay, so I just like to mix that up. Now, fantasy colors, anytime that you're mixing them up, you can customize them, obviously. So just take like a white paper towel and then swatch that to just get the exact tone that you want. Um, I create a lot of these. Like I have one lady that her name's Erica. She was actually in yesterday. And every six weeks, well, five to six weeks, she comes in and we get to have fun and change up her color. She does a, like a blonde root with a natural like 9N plus level. And, and that's Paul Mitchell, by the way. And then I highlight her, obviously, so that I can get those nice true results with the fashion colors. But it's just a really fun technique that I like to use on her to just add little pops because she's a very eclectic type of person. And she doesn't mind being a little different. And she actually loves all the compliments that she gets whenever she's out and about. So I always love hearing that too. Now, first I'm going to go in with this nice little Cricut brush here. Now, what makes this so great for doing the root smudge is that it has these very soft bristles, a lot like when you're using what you use for balayage. So it's very tapered, you have higher, lower bristles, plus they're a little bit jagged. And because it's soft, you're not totally pressing into the hair. So I like to just start out right in the perimeter, painting my little base. Now I went in with a diagonal section. Let me just turn that so you can see that a little bit better. So I went in originally with this little diagonal section. Now I'm just gonna outline that with this little Cricut brush that I was talking about. We're gonna get right up to the root. Now I'm taking a rather large section. section. I don't know why I am slurring like this today. I say section sometimes. Sure. So. <laughs> <laughs> just get a little tongue tied. So I just drag that down a little. I don't press right through to that middle section because later on with my paddles, I'm going to be using those to lay my color down and get like a little pressure going. Okay. 
So I just like, as I said, to use this paddle so that I can apply my color, especially when I'm using like the yellow and some of the lighter colors. So I can really saturate through. Now, as you can see, I just painted a couple of lines here. So that way, when I go to smudge with my hands after I apply with the paddle, I'm going to give a seamless little blend to it, whereas I would make a lot more work for myself if I were to do this by hand and I have to constantly go back and forth wiping my hand. And then as I discovered while playing with this, that when you do it that way, you end up getting a very big color bleed because um, another mannequin that I had done for Matt, I was using magenta and I had yellow and I thought, oh, that'll be so cool. And then it wasn't very cool. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. You don't have another brush, do you? Yeah. All right. So getting back into that, now I'm just going to drop this guy out the way now that I am done with it. And this is where I will take the section and just start to massage that. Now, I usually like to go from top to bottom depending on like the blend that I'm trying to make. So right now, I wanna blend that red right up into the yellow. Because I wanna make a little bit of an orange. And as I said, this just helps to push the color upwards and saturate the entire section. And now you can see that we have that nice little blur going by massaging that through. And then I just have a little towel here that's just half wet, half dry, so that I can wipe my hands off in between and not disrupt any of those other colors. So now I'm gonna take the black and I'm gonna drag that down into our yellow. Now, if you don't wanna see as much black blurring into the yellow, you can do it the other way, where you can actually go from the yellow up, and that way you see a little bit more yellow. Okay, so there's our first little section there. Now, I'm the type of person that, I've taken a lot of classes and I've gotten a lot of different perspectives from different hairdressers, some that they're very into nature and they draw inspiration from going out into the woods and seeing leaves fall and something like that. And I never really got it when I first started doing hair because I was looking at it from this totally, you know, like technical standpoint, whereas fantasy colors, they're very organic. They're very whimsical and fun. So you do have to have fun. Yes, have the technical side of it where you want to go and why you're picking the certain pla placements that you have. But don't get so caught up in it that you forget to have fun. Okay, so again, I've dragged down just those couple of little sections. Seeing as how I did yellow over here, now I feel like I want to do a little bit of blue. So I'm just gonna put that right underneath those little sections or ribbons of color that I dragged down. And if there's a large enough void, I'll drag a little bit of that up with my brush on a diagonal, bringing that a little further down now. And then with this section down here, let me switch my paddle brush. Or it's my official, paddle. Veronica, you are an OG. We're making the executive decision right now. All right. And then let's see. I'll do yellow on this side. Because I don't really want the colors to actually blend too much. So I try to stay conscientious of what color it's sitting next to and what color is sitting on top of it. So down here, again, we're going to go in, start blurring that yellow into the blue. So I'm going to work my way up. And as you can see, it's starting to make that kind of little turquoisey, greenish little color there. And then just clear off my hands. And now I'm going to blend that blue upwards into the black. Oh, 
All right. So the other reason that I like this little brick lay is that it's easier for me to lay my sections down. So they're not going to overlap onto each other and end up coloring the other section. And again, we're going to go in with our Midnight and Bordeaux. Outline that root. Now, this one I'm going to drag down a little bit further because I don't want it to blend in with the other sections. And as I talked about in the beginning, I always want to create a little bit of a lower, darker point so that it'll pop these sections that are on either side. So you're creating your own shadow. So taking that down a little bit further. And almost like a relaxer application, I'm going to go in top and bottom because seeing as how I'm doing that little massaging motion of blending those colors, that's going to saturate that little middle section for me. Okay, I'm just going to see, did I go low enough? So I'm actually going to go a little bit lower now that I'm putting that next to my section because I'm like, I really want the Midnight and Bordeaux to hit in between the yellow and the blue here. So that way these two colors really pop. And then especially if you're keeping that long, then the third color that I'm gonna put in, which is going to be blue at the bottom, is now gonna be a nice little juxtaposition. So you have your red, your blue, and your yellow going on at the bottom. And you can keep doing, you know, two sections of color, three sections of color, totally up to you. Or you can just have one with your root smudge. So again, I'm a very big, you know, create your own kind of canvas and your own kind of magic with your work kind of person. I'm not going to say this is the way you do it. And that's the only way. Because after this many years of doing hair and the amount of hairdressers that I've come in contact with, like Brian, like Matt, um, Colin Caruso, Stephanie Kachelski, um, it was such a, a really great experience to be able to talk hair with all of these people and to see them work. And that was the biggest takeaway that I had. Know what you're doing and why you're doing it, but have fun with it. And when I was going through the educator program, I went through with a guy called Ryan, well, named Ryan Belmonte. And he was awesome because he was the one that just kept reminding me with these little love notes that we would write to each other after a presentation. And he said, just have fun. And that's what I've been trying to do ever since then. All right, so we got that section. Now, if you're the type of person that you like to have your sections separated and you don't want them free hanging like this, then I'm just going to use a little bit of Bali Wrap. Lay that right over the section. And you can see through it. Obviously, there's nothing to really process, so you're not really worried about that. It's literally just working a little bit neater. Now we're going to drop down that next section. So this is why I sectioned it out the way that I did, so that way I can just work panel by panel and be a little bit faster because anybody that knows me knows that I work at my own pace, which is slow. Because I like to overthink every last thing that I do. So sometimes I just got to sit there and stare at the hair, but you don't always have that time in the salon. But pretty much everybody knows that when you're doing a fantasy color, you're committing to a good amount of time in the chair. So most people really don't care that, yes, this is going to be like maybe a half hour, an hour or whatever of an application because this is literally art on their head. Okay, so with this section, I am just smudging right at the root instead of dragging that down past about two inches like I was doing with the other sections. Now, if you want, you can lay that against the head. Let me turn that a little bit. You can lay the section against the head once you get a little further up in your sectioning because now it's not rounding out and the nape is kind of a funny place because seeing as how it flattens out and curves here it's kind of hard not to mention you don't really want to go staining somebody's neck 
So up here, I got a little bit more scalp to work with. So I'll just push my section off to the side so that way I am getting to the middle and then I don't have to do as much work with the smudging with my hands. All right, let's see. I think for this section, we'll go red. And with this, you can plug in just about any color that you want. And of course, any color line that is your preference. As I said, I just like the semi-conditioning properties of the Pop XG. And I like the consistency, it's pretty thick. So even if the hair is slightly curly, I do get like a nice saturation. Okay, so again, I'm gonna switch that paddle out now that I'm gonna switch to blue. And then you can kind of feel like a little painter. As I said, you kind of get like your little Bob Ross feel having these little paddles here. Now for this one, I'm gonna go blue for the tips of the hair. And again, if you're coloring hair for somebody, if you're in a compartmental or departmentalized salon, where somebody does coloring, somebody else does cutting, you know, something like this, you would definitely want to consult with whoever's doing the cut to see how far you would bring down these tricolors. Because if you're just doing one color or two colors, sorry, like what I did in this middle section, then it doesn't really matter. Now, when you're doing a section like this, obviously, if the hair is going to be cut pretty short, you don't want to have like this beautiful little blue and this blend that you have right now with the red being totally cut off. So just be aware of what the haircut and also the styling that the person is gonna use. Just take that into account when you're coloring. Okay, and again, I am going to blend my red up into the black. And I just like this nice little subtle blur because then you don't get that harsh line of demarcation because that is like my pet peeve in life is to sit next to somebody or behind somebody because as a hairdresser, yeah, I'm always looking at hair. So I guess I'm the best and the worst person to go to a wedding with or any special occasion because I will constantly be fixing your hair, moving pins around and stuff like that. So again, I love hair. So again, just have fun, but think about what you're doing and why. Oh, lost control of it there. Okay, I gotta find a way to get this to click. Got it. Got it. <laughs> All right, so again, on these outer corners, just taking these diagonal sections, that makes like a little triangle in a way. Now, if you miss a section like this, again, because we're working section or panel by panel and then section by section, you can tap those little areas that you might have missed. So for me, it's a lot easier to have this roadmap ahead of time so that I don't sit there overthinking any section and then take a lot longer than I need to. So just painting that outside. And as I said, now that we have this side of the head that we can mold the hair to, I'm just gonna push that in a little bit more. And again, only taking these little sections about maybe two inches, three and a half, I don't know, whatever. I'm not good at measuring. I'm taking it a little bit of ways from the, the root or the scalp itself. Lori's got a good question. Um, she's saying, how do you stop bleeding at the bowl? Now, with something like this, I do try to get somebody to at least let me do a cool rinse. And when you're working panel by panel like this, it is a little easier to lift that up, especially if you have an assistant. But if you don't, don't use hot, hot water. Try to go in with a cooler temperature. Most people that get fantasy colors are already used to doing really cold rinses and all of that stuff. So it's usually not a problem. But that would be my recommendation. Cooler rinse. And of course, making sure that you're using a sulfate-free shampoo 
Because if you're using, say, something like, um, like a lot of people will use Tresemme and um, Pantene and stuff like that, and it totally rips my soul out because then it's like, okay, you just flushed all of my hard work and your money down the drain very, very quickly. So it really does matter because, as we all know, that um, uh, laurel sulfates that are in those shampoos, they're like mild detergents for the hair. So they're literally going to open up that hair shaft. And seeing as how the fantasy color is only living on the surface of the hair, it's just going to open that up, and it's literally going to fall right out. Yeah. And as I said, most people that get fantasy colors, they already know you're going to freeze your brain out. You're going to have blue lips if you really want to keep this for the longest amount of time. But what I have noticed with little fun things like this is that when they do bleed, and you can see that as we're melting them together, they just make, oh, oh. I stained the floor. <laughs> it's all good, Danielle. Oopsie. <laughs> you know, it's a good thing when your boss believes in you and is okay with your clumsiness. Yep. Even as he's staring at that blue brush that's still sitting there. So I'm just <laughs> going to get that real quick. <laughs> I didn't put in a white floor thinking no one's ever going to get color on it. Just so you know. I still didn't want to be the first one. Yeah, well, you are. It's official. <laughs> I'm just going to sign my record. name on that spot now. Yeah, it's on record. Um, it. Yeah, I think that's good. And uh, so Lori's saying, are you saying rinse? section by section in cold water. I think cool water is cool water. Yeah. Definitely uh it doesn't have to be freezing cold. It's just cold water warm water opens the cuticle even more. So even talking to your clients about maybe not taking the hottest showers ever is probably a good idea. Um another thought on this too is that this doesn't have to just be with fantasy color. Like this technique that Danielle's doing, I like to transfer that into maybe using demi color, um, you know, gel like colors that you can kind of slide into the hair creating dimension and, you know, kind of talk about that a little bit too. Absolutely. Um, I believe there's a video that you did with Colin about zone toning. And that's a lot like what this is, yeah. where you're just isolating certain areas and creating your own light and dark. So I love that concept. Yeah, me too. So we do as hairstylists, we get caught in that, you know, that exact nature of, okay, this technique is to get this result. But as I keep saying, and I'll keep saying every week, learn it, master it, and then play with it. So my favorite uh, saying from Pablo Picasso, I think everybody knows it at this point, is learn the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist. Yeah, that's a good one. Now, so Karina, real quick, is uh, what shampoo brand do you recommend for those colors? So maybe if you want to go into not even so much brand, just talk about like type maybe a little bit. I mean, you can say okay. brand too. I don't care, but like definitely the type, you know. All right. Well, um, personally, I like anything that's moisture based. Uh, you have to be careful with that sometimes because certain brands, they put a lot of different humectants in their moisture lines. So make sure that it's not something that's protein rich. And again, sulfate free. The reason that I say make sure it's not protein rich is because they have a larger diameter. So when that's going into the hair, that's going to displace the color molecule itself, which, as I said, with the fantasy colors, that's only living on the surface of the hair. So you want things that are very, very gentle on the hair. So no clarifying shampoos. Um, I usually like anything that is a color safe shampoo because they're sulfate free. They have lots of different little fancy uh, technology to them now, I guess you could say. And they help to lock in those colors by shutting down that cuticle layer. Um, conditioners are also an important thing. I don't go in with a thick cream conditioner. I always go in with uh, a cream rinse. Cream rinses or detanglers are a lot finer in their slip and their texture. And then like, all right, I'll mention a brand because I love Paul Mitchell. I think that's obvious by now. Um, I, like, <laughs> I like the detangler 
from their line for sealing down a lot of my fashion colors because it's pH balanced. So even if the hair is a little rough, which I'm okay with when I'm doing this, because then they're going to suck up that color and I know it's going to stay a long time. But by balancing out that pH level, I know that it's going to stay in the hair. It's not going to fade into like funky spotty pieces. Um, if the hair is overly dry, then I do like to go and use uh, the Hydromist spray just to plump that back up. And that way it's an even canvas, you know, like it's not going to grab dark in certain areas. Is the detangler pH balanced? It's a, from what I remember, it's a three, right? On the pH scale or, or is that not true? Well, your hair naturally is anywhere from like five to a 2.5 to a 5.5. Uh, okay, gotcha. All right. So because it has like carrot oil, grapeseed oil, it helps to just, like I said, even everything out, yeah. bring the pH down to normal, especially if the hair has been a little loved on by using lighteners and things like that. Yeah, people don't think about the fact that, you know, you're putting color over something that has, it's sitting at a different pH level, then you're going to get different results, kind of like what you're saying. Like, so some might take deeper, some might not take at all, some might not cover gray. Like, you know, there's a lot that goes into it, uh, more than just putting a color on. And like, we're taught in school, hey, throw 20 volume on, you'll cover gray. That's not, <laughs> you know, like, it's, it's so much more than that. So I like that you're breaking all that down. It's true, though. And I will always talk about that in every single class because what is with this blue? <laughs> I don't know, but that one missed the floor. Yes, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I am a klutz. I own up to this, and it just kind of makes for conversation. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. And, okay, so again, this section is more horizontal, and it's wider than all of my other sections. So what this is going to do is it's going to just be a very, very light veil of the darker black root with those, like, tropical blue ends. So you'll just see tiny little ribbons that will lay over these other sections. Okay. Wipe off my hands there and pick up my fallen comrade. I'm just going to leave this in the bowl so I don't hit that again. <laughs> Let's see here. I love Lori's got, Lori's got the questions. I love it. Um, would you use yes. the pH balancer before application? Yes, you can do that. Um, it totally depends. If this is somebody you know, you've been working on, like with my client Erica, uh, she is naturally curly. She's always putting some type of leave-in conditioner in her hair. And she's al also a nature girl. So she's out in the sun. I know that I'm fine with just going straight in, putting a color right over her hair. Some people, you might have to, you know, go in with maybe like a, a Malibu treatment just so that you can clean the canvas a little bit more. Or... If you're into Paul Mitchell, like we are. Oh. I mean, I wear contacts. I'm kind of used to that. Thank you. Okay, so. Now we're working on that left-hand corner here. Let's see. Underneath, I've got the red and the blue section here. And then next to that, I have blue. So I'm going to go with yellow on this one. And I think this one, I'm actually going to do the entire section of yellow instead of mixing that with another color. The reason I want to do that is, again, so that that is going to have little ribbons of color because seeing as how this section comes to a point right over here, that's going to be almost like a baby light of yellow that's laying over the blue. So I'm going to like how that mixes together. So that's why I'm saying that this is creative, but you're still thinking and you're still technical as you're working. So I think this is a good... Um, Rebecca's saying, is this great for any type of hair. One thing I think we should pull into this 
is obviously most people are not coming in here with a perfectly one color canvas. Um, so you either have to pre-lighten somebody if they want this color. Let's just say that most people don't want this color, right? But it's fun. It's creative for us. And it showcases the ability to add depth and movement and thought process when it comes to putting in multiple colors, like we talked about zone toning and all of that stuff, right, Danielle? Yeah. So I want you guys to like take your mind there. Obviously, if you color somebody platinum and you want to make them have these primary colors and put this through there, that's cool. Um, but think more outside of the box in practical application of this is, you know, being able to use multiple toners and demi colors and not just throwing one, one color over everything and, and just imagine what you can create that way uh, with browns or blondes or golds or coppers or reds, whatever it is. Just imagine what you can do with this type of technique. Exactly. Um, is there any way you can get on to my Instagram? Because I do have someone that I did um, highlighting plus a tease, well, balayage, teasy lights, and foil highlighting, and then zone, zone toning on her. And that was in preparation for her having a baby, so she knew she wasn't going to be in for a long time. So, yes, it was a lengthy visit, but it was phenomenal. And that lasted, through, I'd say, the first six months of her pregnancy. I'm going to find you. <laughs> I know. And I can't even say, oh, look at this date. And this particular guest, I have literally been doing her hair since she was in high school. And now she is married, a mom of one. And I did her hair, well, me and Brian did hair at her wedding. Okay, you can scroll down a little bit. Oh, she is way down there. <laughs> well, that's a good sign. You've been posting. I mean, this this was a while oh, that's ago. All the way down. Oh no! Nope. Okay, then go back up. Where did she go? Okay, so on this side, I did red. I'm not looking for that. Oh wait, we passed her. We got you. Where are you at? <laughs> okay. See it? No, I'm not seeing it on there. I'm just gonna step over here. And she should be up a little. No. I've seen her twice, but it's not the hair that I was thinking of. There she is. There. So in the green sweater. Right here. Yes. So she's an example of, like I said, we did a money piece with foil highlighting, then teasy lights, and then a little balayage in between so that we can get varying levels of blonde on her and then I did zone toning can't say that I remember exactly what tones I was using I know that they were all in the cool families so like these A's and PA's and I did that from like um, high point of the head was your lighter color and then middle section was your medium tone and then darker was underneath so Jess I have had the privilege of creating lots of different looks for her. So she's actually on there with a few different looks. We've even done like chopping her hair off. But that's just a great example of this technique of just thinking your way through it, but that's highlighting. But then the zone toning is the color melting. So that's what I mean by you don't have to just take this as, oh, I can only do this technique with fashion colors. And if you guys want to take a look at that on your own, <laughs> there's the uh there's Danielle's Instagram handle so you can find her there and then there is a lovely gray-haired lady on there that I had done a fashion color and I had a lot of fun with that one because it was actually with a water gun oh yeah I remember this <laughs> didn't we do that live on here once or did we just talk about it I think we just talked about it okay I'm about to get stabbed in the eye by my mic again. I know. Okay. It's, uh, I don't know. I got, I got weird ears. All right. Whatever. I'll take the pain for you guys. I don't care. <laughs> Just talk out of your eye. That's, that'll exactly. solve everything. You know, 
I'll just have like a little Popeye thing going. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. And again, this medium section, medium middle section, we're going to saturate down to the middle of the hair shaft because I really want to create a dark shadow right in this top section that overlays everything else so that it separates and we get those nice peaks of color that you saw in our pre-done here. And again, just painting down a little random couple of ribbons. Well, let's see, we've got blue right under that. We've got red next to it, yellow on the other side. So I think this one, I am going to do a tricolor. So yeah, I'll start off with blue. And if you wanted, you could even separate these sections if you wanted and change that up so that you can customize, again, what these colors are sitting next to. And now I'll do red right at the tip of the hair here. So Lori wants to talk about pricing real quick. My breakdown with pricing for you guys is she's saying most services are based on product used. I disagree. Um, I think everybody should price based on time um, and understand what your business needs to to stay open or to be profitable or whatever it is, you got to assess that. So look at, this is obviously, you got to look at, are you, did she come in blonde already? Do you need to make her blonde first? So is it going to take, you know, two hours? Is it going to take four hours? Is it going to take six hours? And then kind of base it on that and then do all of your pricing based on the amount of time that it takes for you to accomplish something. A haircut takes 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, it's going to be priced one way. A color takes 45 minutes to an hour. It's, which usually doesn't happen. It's normally like an hour and a half, two hours. That's why a color costs more than a haircut, in my opinion. So I would just like, do your guys, do yourselves a favor. Uh, if you do your own pricing, sit down, figure out what is realistic in your area. And then also based on your rent and all of that, sit down and assess exactly what you need to be making per hour to have the lifestyle, the living that you want. And is it realistic? And then price everything out like that. That way, you know exactly how much time you can assess. You can do a consultation with somebody. How long is their specific thing going to take? And then you can quote them on that and not just saying, because somebody that comes in has no hair that has, um, you know, really fine, low density hair is going to take a lot less time than somebody comes in with a, sh a super thick, long head of hair could be the same service, but why would you, you know, price it the same? So don't think about necessarily just product usage. You got to think about time and, and how that goes into it. And obviously product usage will go into that time. So that's how I, uh, that's how I always look at it. So we can't really quote that here. Like what Danielle would charge for this. I don't even know. Cause this isn't a realistic situation. Um, but you know, if it would take her a few hours, then it would be based on whatever she costs over a few hours. And I totally agree with that. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have now moved into our front sections here. Now with this, I'm taking really large diagonal sections. So it's pretty much spanning the entire section itself. And again, I'm just going in, blurring this line a little bit. I'll worry about the saturation of these mids once I get the other chosen color on there. So <laughs> I have yellow behind that. So let's do a little yellow. And Lori, this is another thing. I think it's a good conversation, but um, you know, she's saying she sees transformations taking five hours and only charging $200. I would look at, you know, where I grew up in Illinois my whole life, uh, you could, have a house in your mortgage for 350 bucks, 400 bucks, maybe 500 bucks for a nice house a month where I live now, 3,000, $4,000 a month for a mortgage. So you, you know, it's subject to where you, where you're located. You know, some, somebody could spend five hours and, sp and charge $200 and it's great. It's a great income. I couldn't 
spend five hours and charge $200, I wouldn't be able to pay for, you know, my home. So, you know, you have to base it on location and, and I don't, I think it should be pretty easy at that point. Once you know, cause your area is going to already dictate what the pricing is for the most part, um, to be able to do it. I don't know, but that's kind of where I'm at with it. Well, as I said before, with this, I was just going in and having fun yeah. and just making something up on a completely clean canvas. So no, we're not going to have that scenario. Are you going to have somebody that maybe they have blonde hair already and it's got a rooted look because it's grown in? Yeah, those are scenarios that we get. Yeah. Do you have to do the entire head? Absolutely not. You can just do small ribbons of color. Yeah, imagine just doing a patch of this just to add a little bit of fun to it. Um, you know, just a couple sections throughout. You could do that. Uh, add a little accent to a disconnection in your haircut. Um, really get creative with it. Have fun with it. You don't have to do the whole head. Most people that want this couldn't afford it, probably. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, but I'm just picturing, uh, you know, younger clientele maybe, uh, but not even anymore, really. I don't know. I just sounded old. <laughs> I just, I just, I'm older than you. So that's not making me feel real good. I just like, I just choked on my words. <laughs> I just choked my words. Oh, well, that anything is possible. Have you not taught me that? <laughs> that is true. All right. Then. People will pay you. Like it is true. You know, I like to watch a lot of movies. So, you know, I don't know if anybody has ever heard of the movie. It's kind of old. I am really aging myself here. It's Amazing. Kevin Costner movie called Kevin Costner. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Kevin Costner, field of dreams, build it. And they will come. Yes. That was, so, filmed, that was filmed in Iowa, you know? No, I did yeah. not know that. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. That's a lot of fields there. <laughs> there was. So was children <laughs> of the corn. So. Oh geez. No, yeah. no, we're not going to talk about that. That movie freaked me out. Yeah. But, um, yeah, like I was saying, it's one of those things that if fantasy colors and in-depth transformations are your thing, then yeah, go ahead and maybe do a couple of discounted ones where they're paying for the product and a little bit of your service time. So that way you made some money, but they are your, your billboard. They're the ones that are going out. And when somebody sees their hair, they're going to be like, Oh my God, that is so cool. Who did that? And each personality of your guests, they're different. You can customize this. So I can't say it enough. Have fun. Yep. Also, take the technique itself and think what else you can apply it to. You didn't get into this because you want people to tell you exactly what you to do. You wanted a little bit of creative freedom when you got into hairdressing. Plus, you wanted to make people feel good. And fantasy colors, like I said, they are very, very empowering for a lot of people. Right on. All right. A couple things we got. This one I love. Uh, I have 613 color extensions and wigs. <laughs> and Do them all. This color. Do them all. That's such an awesome thing. Like that's, I think that's super cool. Like just being able to like switch it out. Yes. Oh, that, you know what? That was actually another thing that I find cool about hair history. So Vidal Sassoon back in the day in London used to do these hair balls and basically it would be showing off whatever were the new seasonal trends that were going on at the time. And it'd be a big party. They'd have it in a hotel. There would be people, you know, dressed up to the nines and they would have their models come out depending on the theme. They could be in a carriage. They could be, you know, dressed up as a swan or something like that. One particular one that I loved was from, I believe it was like the 50s or 60s, where women, if you watch the show, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, and she's always got those matching hats, matching shoes, matching purse, just coordination to the nines. Well, at one point, it was popular to match your outfit to your hair, your purse, and even your dog. So they did have these little wefts and spirit glue that they would just attach this little weft. It's just a little pop of color to coordinate with their outfit. And I absolutely love that reel. That's an amazing thing. Right? Yeah. Like I said, I, no I love hair. Yeah. <laughs> I watch a lot of different things. 
And I just like random information. So here's a special service announcement from Ed Combs. Uh, Ed, I appreciate you. I'm just going to put this up on the thing because I do, I am aware of this. Somebody has created an account using my picture, my, my name and, oh. uh, and my videos and they've been posting them. And then they're asking people for bank account information that they want a thousand dollars. That is not me. Um, there's nothing I can do about it. I've told Facebook, but, um, you know, uh, that's why typically they would verify an account so that they could, you know, show that the person is really the person, but they won't do that either. So I don't know what's going on with Facebook, but I apologize to anyone because there are people that have given their bank account information to these people. And I don't recommend that at all. If you win money, you never have to give your bank account information, guys. Social media 101. You do not, you never need to give your bank account info. So don't do that to anybody. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. So it's been going on for a few weeks now, but I don't know what else to do here. Okay. Oh, Carly. Carly's saying, what's up, Danielle? She said, you hey, go, Danielle, Carlton. actually. I miss you, Carlton. Don't we all? She said uh, her she was supposed to have a Mohawk client today in her book and fantasy, fantasy color on that. Shut up. Canceled. That's rude. Rude. Very rude. How can we change hairdresser lack of passion or dedication in Australia? We have an industry here that has no specialty skills. What? Because I don't know. I... I Maybe it's just the people that I know because, like, my mother's Welsh and whole family still lives over there, so I know quite a few hairdressers there. So if you're in Penarth, Wales, please <laughs> check out Salon Blue. <laughs> there you go. The blue girls are wonderful there. Anyway, so a lot of them, they had gone and done apprenticeships in uh, Melbourne, and when I would look at their Instagram, and one, the lifestyle alone is gorgeous, but their work was just amazing and truly organic. Um, so I don't know. I, I kind of feel differently about that because there was a part of me that I was like, when can I go down under? Like, their education was top notch. Yeah, I think people could say that about any place, you know, um, that there's lack of passion, I think. I think this industry I've seen just, you know, we've been in it for a long time, but just it's easy to fall if you don't stay educated and you don't stay current um, and you just repetitively do the same thing over and over again, the same clients, you, you keep your clients the same, you start getting into other things. Like I think what makes us different here is everybody that works here is that we're obsessed with, this industry and we're obsessed with learning. So it's hard for it to, to, for the passion to run out. So I think you just need to find somebody that you can see their passion through, through their Instagram or through their online. Um, you know, you're going to see if they really truly love it and that's everywhere. That's in the U S that's in Australia. That's in you know the UK, wherever it is. And, uh, just look for somebody that's constantly, uh, posting. She said, Brisbane is really, is very bad. Uh, we don't know. I don't know on that one, but you can find passion, guys. It's out there for sure. It's everywhere. It's in every small town. There's somebody that's probably doing cool hair. You don't even know. So right. And you know, don't be afraid to just let somebody experiment a little. I was very lucky with my clientele in that the majority of the people that I have, I've been doing their hair a long time. So they kind of went on my hair journey with me, you know, going to, um, uh, what was that, Paul Mitchell, the lab, that was not far away from here, and getting my teaching license when I said, all right, I'm going to take the leap, and I'm going to become a Paul Mitchell educator. I mean, I was kind of silly because at the time I was just like, I'm broke. I can't really afford education. So, all right, they give free education. Not knowing that I was stepping into like the number one team. And yes, Matt was there. This was even before Hayden was born. 
his son. So like, yeah, a long time. It's been a long time. And most of my clientele, yeah, they've, they've been there with me through it. And they've let me try all kinds of things on their hair. And some of them worked. Some of them didn't. But I always was honest with them. And I let them know, like, okay, my bad. <laughs> let me fix this. Or, okay, that's wonderful. We're going to write this down. We're going to do this again. So taking ego out of it really does help. And these days... With social media, social media to me is a wonderful thing. It really is. But when you find the right outlets and the right platform, I guess you could say, that you're following, because some of them can be a little intimidating. And it's like, if you're not on a certain level, that's it. You're not part of the cool kids club. And that's what I love about free salon education is that we're a community. You know, we care about each other's growth. Um, like the virtual cutting club, I attend that every Monday. So I don't know if she's here, but shout out to Adele because she is there like every Monday and almost every live. She's cheering you on. She's on here. <laughs> hey, Adele. And, um, Kristen Cobra. She's another one that she's almost like the welcoming committee for a lot of people. Yep. We got Lynn on here. Lynn's always there. Exactly. So like, these are people that have gotten to know each other through this channel and site. And it's wonderful. I didn't have something like that when I got into hair. I wish that I had. Sometimes I think like how much, how much more passionate could I have been? Like literally sky is the limit when it comes to doing hair. You can do anything. It really is up to your motivation. And that doesn't mean that you have to be somebody that's going to, you know, work at this major salon or, you know, travel the world. And there's nothing wrong with that because the joke has been that my handle, the hands downs, has because, is because I don't like to talk. <laughs> I get nervous as hell. It's, it's a lot of responsibility to convey a really good message and, you know, a little pressure when you're on Matt's site but at the same time I don't know maybe I'll sound stupid saying this at my age but YOLO whatever go for it you find what works for you what's great and what so many people are learning about you just over the last two weeks uh, and I see it through the chat is is your first off you're way less nervous this week than last week <laughs> even though I thought you did great last <laughs> week but um you you're your voice is good. It's coming through through good. And people are like relating to your calmness, you know, like I'm probably in the middle, like Brian's probably the most ex extreme personality on here. And then, mm -hmm. and then you are <laughs> probably the calmest personality on here. And then, you know, I think I sit in the middle. Um, and so it's just fun. Like I see everybody, you know, commenting and chatting and, uh, it's just good to like see the community building and being able to do this live every day. And uh, it's so cool that you guys tune in every day and are getting to know each other. Like Danielle's saying, like all of you guys just building your friendships on here. It's really fun to see. So um, Danielle, I want to give you a time check. It's one thirty nine. Okay. Um, well, good thing that we are on that last panel. I just yep. needed a little bit more of our base. Danielle's got a client at uh, 2 o'clock. She's in between. This was one of her clients for the day. <laughs> exactly. And Ed's asking, uh, it's Coombs. Sorry, I, I, said, I think I said Combs earlier, but uh, what is the brand of color you are using? Sorry, I missed the beginning. I am using Paul Mitchell Pop XG. And I am using Midnight and Bordeaux right at the root here right now and smudging that with my Cricut brush. That is really great for root smudges and shadow roots, like especially when you're doing any type of toning right at the bowl what on wet hair. What is the difference hair? between uh, that Cricut brush and like the Paul Mitchell balayage brush? Well, the Paul Mitchell balayage brush, it, it still has like a straighter line, whereas okay, this one is a little bit more like, where are we at? There we go. So that one is completely straight, whereas this one is just like slightly serrated. 
And that one's a soft bristle, so you can make it work with that. It's just that this one has, like, staggered bristles as well. So there's, like, two rows of really, really thick bristles, whereas yeah, like the Paul Mitchell one is, like, finer. So, you know, again, your tools will also help with your work. So pay attention to what you're using and why. And that's just how I came to that little conclusion. And it, it really started with Christina bought it and I'm just curious and gave it a try. And I'm like, Ooh, which is another great thing about working with people that are passionate because like we get into these ruts where, as Matt said, we will use the same techniques. We'll do, you know, we, we just get bored and we'll use the same formulas for color and things like that. And slowly but surely, your clients start to look all alike. So one of the best things about working with a personality or a person with personality like Brian is that he's always trying something new. And then it'll be like, oh, my God, this is going to be scary at the bowl. Talking about like flash toners and things like that. He's like, it's going to be so scary at the bowl. But trust me, it's going to be beautiful. And he's right. And I'm like, dang it. Why do I not just learn by now to just give it a try? Yeah. So these are things that even I struggle with after all these years where I have to fight to not get set in my ways and be lazy. So yes, I uprooted my life. I gave up my entire clientele. I went back to school so that I can get enough hours to transfer my license because above all, I will not be told no. I will make it happen. So I got my license. I came here. And it's, it's been great. You know, I have gotten that passion back because at the salon that I was at, I was losing it. And it had gotten to the point where physically I couldn't really do the education thing with Paul Mitchell anymore, but I really missed those meetings. I missed the education. I missed the camaraderie. And here I would get to teach again, but I wouldn't have to travel. I mean, well, I travel here. Right. But well, not after next week. I know. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, three and a half years later, I'm now going to become a New Hope resident. And I'm going to have even more time to obsess about hair and what I'm going to do on our next live. That's right. And we did talk yeah. about your next live. So we've been working, prepping for it. Um, so next week you'll be doing relaxer, right? Yes. Hmm. Now. I'm going to be doing a lot of different things. So it'll be relaxers. It'll be natural styles. It'll be, you know, styles on straight wavy. I kind of just like to be a jack of all trades and a master of none. I know I actually realized on my promotional flyer, we got to make a new one for you anyways, but that it just said curly and styling and I should have put color and, and everything else for the most part <laughs> on there. So is up with this thing i really did put this on you know what's funny though up. i don't even know if it's your fault i think you and brian have a bigger head than i do and i don't you jealous have... of my big brain hey, or I... our big brains no i'm upset with my small <laughs> head so i ordered a large microphone it's coming in today uh yes yes i do have a larger brian's dome head. that makes it a little harder for me <laughs> to find fitted hats yeah but thankfully this is good enough that i can shave my head off and not really care <laughs> Well, the, <laughs> the bigger microphone comes today, so because Brian was struggling with it, uh, fitting his head. Well, the other problem being that um, I can move my ears. So unfortunately, with the mask wearing and now with the microphones, that makes for things moving around and getting weird. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Fun fact about me, if you wanted to know that. All Hopefully right. You took that leap of faith. That's right. That's what it's all about. You know, you just sometimes you got to give it up to the universe and let's see what shakes out. Okay, so now this section, I've got my red. And for this, I'm just going to work that red through, making sure that it's saturated, roots in between. And now I'm going to start working my way up to the roots. Now, for this, I actually want to go from yellow to red because I don't want to bring the red up higher. I actually want to blend down. Because when I did another mannequin for Matt, 
it was, I started to say it before, it was magenta and I was using yellow. And when I dragged the magenta down into the yellow, it just made like this coral color, which was cool, but it's not what I wanted. <laughs> so just keep that in mind when you're working. You know, how much of your darker color do you wanna drag into your lighter? Okay, and then just lightly blur that. Now with the top, I actually took larger sections, but I'm still working on a diagonal. I'm just gonna turn this whole thing, that's easier. All right. So next, we are going to take another large diagonal section. Just gonna twist that hair off, lay that right against the side of the face there. Let's see, what do I want to use now? And I'm just gonna do an entire red section here. Now with the top on the original, I did a lot more red because I did want a somewhat more believable color to be the top veil for everything. And that way, the truly fun kind of, uh, like I said, Jackson Pollock-like painting that we did underneath is more of your peekaboo. So if you wanted, you could have even done like the top uh, shadow root a little bit further out. And some of them I am going to do that. But like I said, I wanted to see a lot more red at the top than anything else as a veil. And I know that I keep making this reference to Jackson Pollock. He was a famous painter that was known for his splatter painting. So he would literally just, and everybody's probably seen it at some point, where he has taken color, splashed it along a canvas, he's painted, and he usually paints on the floor. And he'll take a lot of different colors and make these amazing abstract designs. So as I said, I have a lot of eclectic um, interests art being one of them, and I cannot, I'm, I'm not a master at it and know all the differences and nuances, I just know what I like. So I can't wait for this summer, and hopefully, God willing, we're gonna have the Van Gogh experience coming to New York, and then I'll get a little bit more inspiration for some fun colors and fun techniques to do. Yeah, I saw that, it looked super cool. Oh yeah. Like I said, I, I, at first I never understood when stylists would talk about taking inspiration from art and nature and things like that. But now that I've been in it for a little bit and have talked with a lot of bit different people about like, as I said, pushing light and dark and using the colors that are next to it to kind of play off and push forward a color or a texture or something like that that you want to see. So I really appreciate that. And Wahida, I uh, see your question. Are those permanent colors? They're not permanent colors. It's a uh, Paul Mitchell Pop XG. Uh, it's a uh, fantasy color. Semi -permanent. It's a semi-permanent. Yeah, semi-permanent color. So temporary. And then I personally like things like this that are jewel toned a little bit deeper because they stay a, a little longer. Whereas when you're using the pastel colors, like for my one guest that I was talking about, Erica, she is a mature woman and a stylish mature woman at that. And we just do little ribbons of it. We don't do our whole head. And it's something different every time. And she loves it because it's maybe a three, four week commitment. And she's a very, you know, sociable person. She works with uh, holistic medicine as a acupuncturist. And yeah, she has a lot of clients that come in and they love to see her hair. It's, they say it's like the highlight of their day. So that gives me a good feeling as well as her. And it's not for everybody. You can have people that they will have a completely ugly response to it. Like, are you mad? Why would you do that? <laughs> and it's like, because I felt like it. <laughs> and besides that, I do what I want. 
Okay, so got a little smudge on her there. I'm just going to wipe that off. Because even though she's not going to say anything, I still want to be considerate and not cause ring around the face. <laughs> that is very nice. Right? I think so. Okay, so I just want to smudge that root a little bit more so I can create some little darker ribbons here so that when it gets pulled back, it's not just a block of red and then a block of yellow and a block of blue. So it diffuses the darker color. It diffuses as you pull it back. Okay, so we're on to our last two sections here. As I said, this was not something that it was like uh, an easy project. It was, I had a cancellation, it's COVID, so I had time to play. Oh, and that's the other thing. With keeping yourself passionate, keep playing with your mannequins. You know, that's how you find your best aha moments, you know? For sure. I was actually, um, I, I did a, with Ryan Whedon, um, he's the Masters of Balayage, I think, on Instagram. I did his podcast on uh, two days ago, maybe, or yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, yesterday. So we filmed it, and uh, I was talking to him about just, like, people give me a hard time because I use mannequins all the time, and I don't use real people very often. And for me, like, when I work on a mannequin, it's to shut my mind off and, and focus on getting better. And when I... Any, even if it's a model, I don't get the time to do that. Like I don't really get to shut my mind off and just focus on my technique and, and my creativity and my learning, like all of that. Like, and sometimes I'll cut half of a mannequin one day and then the other half another day, just because, you know, when the passion's there, you just do it. And then, you know, if you have to do something else, you can do that. And then when you have it back the next day, like, I just think it's always important to constantly be, um, practicing with a purpose though, like making sure that you're not just like, you can't practice when you have, like, I have like seven or eight guys back to back right after this. Yeah. I'm not going <laughs> to practice anything doing that. That's like game time. Right. And I, I use this reference a lot, but like you practice for the game. So today's game time after this. And then, you know, when I'm sitting here and I'm trying to be creative and I'm trying to get better, then I'll grab a mannequin and I'll spend time working on which section, focusing on how I'm holding it, all of that stuff, you know, um, that's how you get better is spending the time doing it. And then you'd be faster and all of that. So, you know, just grab a mannequin like Danielle is saying. Um, and don't even like, like Brian, like, so his balayage mannequin, we just keep using it over and over again. We're just going to keep doing it. Like keep coloring it with a Demi and then highlight it and then color it with a Demi and highlight it. Like you could do it hundreds of hair colors techniques on one mannequin if you wanted to, um, you know, just keep reusing and keep practicing. Absolutely. All right, everybody's psyched to see your end <laughs> result again because some people okay. did not see it yet. So. All right, so our end results of this application that you see right here is this lovely gal. So what I was talking about before with that really great, red that's overlaid on top and then everything else is just popped out now matt did a class where he had cut this so obviously it's gotten the like supreme amount of professional care and loving so he did a lot of like really great shattered layering that pops out all of these cool little colors and it's almost like graffiti in a way yeah so i love that and as i said i love impressionist art and abstract so this is like whoa for me and you know again have fun because then it can lead to something that even though this is a fashion color here you can do this with regular color you can do this with bleach you can even combine a little couple of ribbons or blocks of fashion color to pop out what you've already got even if it's just a little bit of a pastel so yeah, hope you've that, all had fun today. That was super cool. Um, but yeah, I, th I thought it was super cool. Like the way that I, you said red, yellow, and blue. But when you said it, I, th <laughs> I thought literal like red, yellow, and blue. And this is like, I love the tones. Because until you just said that at the beginning of this class, I didn't realize that 
this was the red, <laughs> yellow, and blue mannequin that you were talking about. Yeah, because um, at first I'm like, hey, Matt, so um, this isn't actually a rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm only using a couple of colors. And when you said you were going to color it red, yellow, and blue, I I think I looked at you like you had three heads, probably. Yeah, cause because I'm guessing that you probably imagined like a block color. color. And yes. I mean, they are primary colors, well, they but are, they're but all they're all blurred. And we actually made secondary colors. So for exactly. any of you guys in school, this is how you can practice color theory, too. That's right. That's right. Okay, so thank you guys for tuning in and going on my nice little painting color journey with me. And... Tune in next week. Matt will be on on Tuesdays. Brian will be on on Wednesdays. And I'll be on on Thursdays. And guys, so. we'll actually be live tomorrow too. Um, oh. Ergo is coming on with Ergonomics. We're going to do some blow dry class. at three, Best brushes ever. Yes. 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. So make sure you guys tune in uh, for that. And yeah, Danielle will be back next Thursday. I'll be here Tuesday. Brian will be here Wednesday. Yep. Um, super fun. So, All right, wherever you are in the world, stay safe and healthy. Bye. And go follow Danielle <laughs> on Instagram. Thanks, guys. <laughs>